All right, we are recording everybody. Hello, this is Chris Forbes again with our uh, next lesson in Math 1. We're on day five, writing and solving inequalities in one variable. Okay, so we've already had an intro into inequalities. Now it's all about writing them, all about solving them, um, still in one variable. So as usual, these videos are meant for you to attempt first. So try it on your own, see what you can do. And then if you don't get it, use me as a little bit of a guide, okay? So this is this video is intended for those that have attempted the problems on their own. All right, as usual, we need to start off with what we are intending to do, what our objective is today, always in the box. So let's go to draw, red's my favorite. Um, and actually, yeah, that's good width, okay. So students will be able to analyze the structure of an inequality in order to determine if the solution, all right, is going to be greater or less than the solution of the related equation. So remember, an equation has an equal sign, and an inequality has the greater than or less than or equal to that, those symbols. So uh, when we solve the related equation, where there's an equal sign, we want to then determine which uh, which solution range would solve the inequality, whether it's to the greater than or less than uh, the solution from the related equation. Okay, so let's jump into it. It says that let's do this. Hmm. Okay. It says that uh, Kieran is getting dinner for his drama club on the evening of their final rehearsal. The budget for dinner is $60. Kieran plans to, all right, so budget is $60, meaning we, we can't exceed $60. So Kieran plans to buy some prepared dishes from a supermarket. The prepared dishes are sold by the pound at $5.29 per pound. He uh, also plans to buy two large bottles of sparkling water that are $2.49 each. Represent the constraints in the solution uh, or in this situation mathematically. Uh, if you use variables, specify which what each one means. Okay, so um, we, we can uh, spend no more than $60, up to $60. So there's our constraint, our constraint, $60. We know that whatever values we come up with have to be less than or equal to that. They cannot exceed $60, all right? So we know that uh, we have $5.29 per pound, and we'll call that P for pound. So we have $5.29 for every pound in P, plus, and then it says $2.49 for each bottle, and there's two of them. So no variables needed there. So there's our equation. 529, and I'm not going to write it down. I'll let you write it down. But P represents um, the pounds of um, uh, prepared dishes. Okay, so depending on the number of pounds, it's 529 per that plus 249 times 2. And no matter what we do for the poundage, it has to be less than or equal to 60. All right. Now, it says... How many pounds of prepared dishes can Kieran buy? Explain or show your reasoning. So using the equation, I'm sorry, the inequality we just came up with, 529P is plus, or sorry, plus 2.49 times 2, less than or equal to 60. If I want to know uh, the most we can do, all right, well, let's set it to where we're solving for, where it is equal to 60, Okay. So this right here in the calculator, I'm getting to be 498. And it's a whole number that I want to subtract from both sides. So I am getting 529P left over. This is less than or equal to um, 60 minus 4.98 is 55.02. And then we can divide both sides by 5.29. So P is less than or equal to, when I divide this by 5.29, I get 10.4. So what that means is, 
is at the very most, the amount of pounds I can get is 10.4 pounds. Anything greater than that is going to make us go above $60, okay? So as long as you have at most 10.4 or less, that's what this inequality is read, you will be within the solution range. All right? All right, very good. Moving on. It says gasoline in a tank. Han is about to mow some lawns in his neighborhood. His lawnmower has a five-gallon fuel tank, but Han is not sure how much gasoline is in the tank. He does know, however, that the lawn mower uses uh, 0.4 gallons of gasoline per hour of mowing. What are all the possible values of X, which we're going to represent as the number of hours Han can mow without refilling the lawnmower? Write one or more inequalities to represent your response. Be prepared to explain or show your reasoning. Um, so for the most part, Let's think about this. Um, we got five gallons that that could be full all the way to the top. That's our constraint in the number of gallons. So I know that has to be the most value that we have. All right. So the number of so so remember it's it says it's 0.4 gallons for every hour. In this case, hours represented. Or I'm sorry. Um, yeah, number of hours. So we'll say. H. Okay, so if uh, we divide both sides by 0.4 and solve for it, I get H is less than or equal to uh, 5 divided by 0.4, and I'm getting to be 12.5. Um, so what this saying is, is it's saying what all the, all the possible values of X, which is the number of hours on can mow. So if I work more than 12.5 hours, all right, if I work more than 12.5 hours, and I'm realizing I used H instead of X, I should have used X, I'm sorry. Then we would exceed five gallons, right? So we can work less than or equal to 12 and a half hours and we will be able to mow whatever, okay? Um, also a reasonable amount um, is that we can't work negative hours, so we can also say that our number of hours has to be greater than or equal to zero. So I'm gonna put right here, greater than or equal to zero. So, I mean, we solved for it and we knew that, heavy, and that's common sense. I didn't have to put that, but I am trying to show the reasonable amount of hours that we can work with a five-gallon fuel tank. All right. Hopefully that makes sense. All right, let's move on. Different ways of solving. So it says Andre and Priya use uh, different strategies to solve the following inequality. Okay, so this is about reasoning skills with inequality. So um, being able to solve an inequality through reasoning skills and mathematical skills it says, Andre and Priya used different strategies to solve the following inequality, but reached the same solution for this bad boy right here. So let's, let's make sense of each strategy until you can explain what each student has done. So we got Andre first. Okay. Again, pause the video, read this, read what he does, and see if you can explain what Andre is doing. Okay. So I'm going to read through it. So on the, on the left side here, it looks like he's solving the related equation. So he replaced the less than symbol with an equal symbol, and he solved it like an equation. He distributed the 2. Um, it looked like he uh, subtracted 18 to both sides. Instead, you got the negative 15. Um, and then it looks like he, he took the 4x to the other side. So negative x minus 4x is how he got negative 5x. And then finally, he divided by negative 5 for us to get x equals 3. So again, that's review, being able to solve an equation. So the related equation, we get x equals 3. But that's kind of like our, our bounds, right? So since we have an inequality, all right, we need to test the original inequality. That's, that seems like what he's doing over here. So what he decided to do is he said, well, let me pick a value that's greater than 3, 
and test it in the original inequality. All right, so instead of an equals, there's a less sign. So he's testing a value. That's all he's doing. So he solved the equation. Now he's testing a number that looks like a number to the right of the inequality to see which side of three this solution works. So instead of an X, he plugged in a four here and a four here and simplified. And he got that 19 is less than 14, which is a false statement. So four is not a solution. So if a number is greater than three is not a solution, that must mean, or the um, not a solution, the solution must be less than three. Um, it says three is greater than X, but I always like to write it with X on the left. There you go. So we're saying that if we plug in values like two or one or zero, then the original equality is um, true. So essentially what he did is, is he, number one, is he solved the related equation, all right, which is a good first step, kind of found that bound of your inequality. But then all he did was tested a number, and he tested a number that was, that was bigger. You could have tested a number that was smaller, doesn't matter, but he tested a number to the left or right to figure out which side of the inequality it rolls on. Okay? Cool. Now, let's look at Priya. Priya, on the other hand, well, still solved the inequality. Looks like she solved it a little bit differently. She still distributed the two. Um, she then brought the, let's see, she brought the negative X to the other side. So she solved the same way, but instead of it being negative at the end and solving, she got that it was positive. Still gives you the same answer. X equals three. That's not the important part. So she solved the related equation. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that. So she still solved the related equation, but then what did she do? All right, so she says in 4x plus 3 and 18 minus x, she's looking at this part right here. There's a 4x on the left um, and a negative x on the right. If x is a negative number, 4x plus 3 could be positive or negative. That doesn't tell us much. But if x is a negative number, 18 minus x will always be positive. So for 4x plus 3 is less than 18 minus x to be true, X must include negative numbers or X must be less than three. Now, that's a mouthful. And honestly, if you didn't fully understand that, that's completely fine. But essentially what she did is she wrote out solving the inequality. So really what she's doing, 4X plus three less than 18 minus X, really what she's doing is she's solving that. She's saying, all right, well, I can move X over here. I can move three over here. And I can divide both sides by five. And she got X is less than three, which is what we got at the very top. So she reasoned through it kind of mathematically with mathematical reasons. So she solved the related equation and then really she replaced the equality symbol with the inequality to see to figure out which one worked. So she she solved the related weight rates or the related equation and went back and looked at the inequality. Now, both are fine. Both they solve the equation, but in my opinion, Priya is probably the better bet because you can just straight up solve the inequality without having to test values. Okay, it kind of almost eliminates the step. So, so look at number two here. I, I want us to think through number two this way. Again, try these on your own, but here's four inequalities. It says to work with a partner and decide um, and, and work on each of these and, and solve some of them with Andre's strategy and some of them with Priya. But for, for the sake of this video and for the sake of learning these, I'd like to just solve the inequalities. Okay. So like for instance, if I got one half P is greater than negative 10, 
Yeah, I mean, you could do Andre's strategy. You could put an equal sign there, solve for P, and then test values to the left and right. But I'm going to leave the inequality, and I'm just going to divide both sides by a fifth. That cancels that out. And I got P is greater than, if you did negative 10 divided by 1 fifth, or that's really 0.2, you get negative 50. And that's the answer. It's all the values greater than negative 50. See, I like Prius strategy. Don't, don't worry about the equal sign and then solving and testing values. Really just leave the equal sign there. I'm going to skip to C. The only time it does matter is when you're solving and getting in by itself like an equation. Remember, this is the only time it matters. If you divide or multiply by a negative number, man, write this or something. If you divide or multiply by a negative number, flip the inequality. It's very important to remember. So here, since I'm dividing by negative 9, I'm going to put in, I'm going to flip this. It's very important you remember that. Otherwise, you'll get the inequality wrong. And I get negative 4. So this is saying all values greater than negative 4. And if you're ever unsure, if you're ever like, man, do I flip it or not? At the very end, test some values that are bigger than negative 4 in the original inequality. If it doesn't work, you might have messed something up. Okay. All right, then there's B. B says, uh, again, well, let's solve it. Let, let's, let's just solve the inequality. I'm going to distribute. So I got uh, 4x plus 28 is less than 8x plus 24. And let me reemphasize. Um, whenever I'm doing this right here, when I say divide or multiply by negative number, I meant from one side of the inequality to the next side, from one side to the next, not within the same side. That, that doesn't change the sign. All right, but anyway, here we are. So I'm going to, I don't know, let's subtract 4x on both sides. I get 4x, that's minus 24 on both sides, I get um, 24, and I subtracted by a negative, I, I, didn't, I didn't divide or multiply by a negative, so, this, so the symbols still stay the same, now I can divide by 4, and divide by 4, so I get, um, I get, let's see here, let me make sure I did that right, Oh, I'm dumb. I said, look at my own work. I apologize, guys. Forbes made a mistake in real time here. Uh, hopefully you fixed it. Hopefully you're confused. What did Forbes do wrong? Jeez. Hey, we all make mistakes. It happens. I subtracted 24. 28 minus 24 is not 24. It is 4. You're probably watching this thinking, what did he just do? So we divide both sides by 4. I apologize for that. So I'm getting... 1 is less than or equal to x, which I like to always write it with x on the left side. It just kind of helps me visualize it a little bit better. So remember, you just kind of flip the whole thing like a mirror would. Instead of 1 is less than or equal to x, it's easier to read it as x is greater than or equal to 1. So it's all values of x that are greater than or equal to 1. All right, let's try D. Um, I hate fractions, so when I'm trying to get C by itself, let's start off by multiplying both sides all by 3 to get that C out of a fraction. So that gets rid of the 3s there, less than. Now, I know you want to probably distribute this to every single number, but really this is just technically one quantity because that negative 2 is right there. So distribute the 3 to the negative 2. That's negative 6, C minus 7. Okay? And then we can distribute the negative 6 through to these values. So I get C is less than negative 6C plus, oh crap, uh, 42? Yeah, positive 42. Negative times a negative is a positive 42. Again, I multiply it by a negative number, but it's, it's on the same side. It's only when I flip to the other side. All right. 
So I'm going to um, add 6C to both sides, and I'm adding a positive number. No need to flip anything. So I get 7C is less than 42. Less than. And then I can divide both sides by 7. And I am getting C is less than, just less than, um, 42 divided by 7 is 6. So essentially what I'm saying here is it's all values that are less than 6. Very good, very good. All right, pause the video. Try this one on your own. It looks like a little matching exercise. See if you're able to read and comprehend inequalities. I'm going to pause for a second myself. And let's move on. So, it, okay, so 1 through 6 is just like the other problems. Um, if you want to match up the inequality, you have to have it as x or whatever the variable is. It looks like it's all x here is going to be x and then the inequality in a number, and then you should be able to match it up. Okay? So in this case, 6x and 3x, you don't want to divide anything. You want to subtract to the other side because it's like terms. You get 3x is less than or equal to when 3 minus 3x is 0. And you can divide both sides by 3. So I get x is less than or equal to 0 divided by anything. Try in your calculator is 0. So which one shows us that? Um, well, our, our bound is 0, so let's find 1 at 0. Looks like it's the last one. Yep, here we are at 0. Everything less than or equal to that because it's a closed circle. This will be f. All right, pause the videos on the last one. I mean, pause, pause the video. Try, try these problems. It's, it's six problems. I don't want to go through all of them. Um, so I'm going to go through these kind of quick. But again, we, we've done a bunch of these problems. This is like the sixth problem we've done. All right, to get x by itself, we divide by a fourth. So I'm dividing by a positive number so the, so the sign stays the same. And then negative a half divided by a fourth, I'm getting to be negative two. Try that in the calculator if you don't believe it. But where is x greater than? So open circle negative 2. Well, here's negative 2 at the at E, and it's going to the right, so it's greater than, so this is E. All right, the next one, I can move 5x to the side by subtracting, so I get 4 is greater than or equal to 2x, and I can divide both sides by 2. Again, it's positive 2, so I'm not changing the sign. 2 is greater than or equal to x, which I I like to flip it. I like to flip it so I can really see it. So that is really the same thing as x is greater than, I'm sorry, I messed up right there. x is less than or equal to 2. The whole thing mirrors over. So where is x less than or equal to 2? I'm going to find, it's either b or c, but less than or equal to 2 is going to be b. So this one is b boy. All right. Uh, this, the video is getting kind of long. I don't want to keep you too much. So for the last one, try the math on your own. Um, I'm getting x is less than one half. X is less than one half, which here is one half less than. Yep, it looks like it's going to be d. It's supposed to be a one right there. Um, the last one, I'd multiply both sides by 3, then I'd add 1 and divide by 4. Um, in this case, I'm getting x is greater than 1, whereas x greater than 1. x is greater than 1. Um, it should be... It should be A, but that looks like it's at negative one half. So the answer is supposed to be A, so we're going to go through that one together here in a second. Not sure why that's posted up on negative one half. So we'll solve that one together. Let's just see. So we can multiply both sides by 3. By 3. We get 4x minus 1 is greater than negative 3. We can add 1, add 1. I get 4x is greater than negative 2. I'll be dang. If I divide both sides by 4, I guess my answer key I did was wrong. That's okay. 
x is greater than negative one half. Not positive one half, it is negative one half, which would be a. And then lastly, I was trying to get rid of that five on the denominator. I'd multiply every side, both sides by five. So the fives cancel here, I get 12, and the fives cancel here, I'd get minus x is less than or equal to 5x. I can add x to both sides, and I get 12 is less than or equal to 6x. And then I can divide by six to get two is less than or equal to x, which again, if we mirror that, it's really x is greater than or equal to two, which we already knew by process of elimination, that was going to be c. All right, very good. Hopefully we reasoned through those, hopefully we paused the video, we tried those on your own, you just kind of used me as a little bit of a resource. I apologize, I hurried through those last three, um, but we're just getting repetitive with doing all these problems, okay? All right, our summary. Let's summarize through it. Now, writing and solving inequalities can uh, help make sense of the constraints that we have in a problem. Sometimes we have a range of values in a situation and solve problems. Let's look at an example. Claire would like to buy a video game that costs 130. But she, okay, so she, she has saved up 48 so far and plans on saving $5 uh, of allowance each week. So how many weeks will it be until she has enough money to buy the game? To represent the constraints, we can write it as, all right, so $48 currently plus five for every single week. That We want that to get to greater than or equal to 130. So it needs to be at the very least 130 or more. Let's reason about the solutions. So because Claire has $48 already and needs to have 130 to afford the game, she needs 82 more dollars, right? Or another way of saying that is 5W is greater than or equal to 82. Okay, we pretty much brought 48 to the other side. If she saves $5 each week, it will take whatever 82 divided by five is, which again, is like us dividing both sides of this inequality by five. So it'll take that many weeks to reach $82 exactly. So 82, point, or 82 divided by five is actually 16.4, so that's like saying W is greater than or equal to 16.4. So any time shorter than 16.4 weeks won't allow her to save enough, which is what the inequality is saying. So the, the words here are the mathematical reasoning of how we solved an inequality. Hopefully, that's what we want you to do. We want you to be able to connect what's happening in an inequality to what's going on with the math. So, um, assuming she saves $5 at the end of each week instead of saving smaller amounts throughout the week, it will be at least 17 weeks before she can afford the game because it was like, what, 16.5, right? Something like that, 16.4. We can also solve by writing and solving a related equation to find the boundary for W and then determine whether the solutions are less than or greater than that value. So um, here's the equation being solved, which we pretty much just did in that last part. So substituting 16.4 for W in the original inequality gives us a true statement. So when W equals 16.4, we have that we have the exact amount of money we need. Now, substituting a value greater than 16.4 also gives us a true statement. Like if I plug in 17, I get 133, which is more than enough money that I need. But if I plug in a value less than 16.4, I got a false statement. Like if I plug in 16, I get $128, which isn't enough. Okay, So therefore, we can reason again that the number of hours that we need to, um, or the number of weeks that we need to work has to be 16.4 or greater. So sometimes the structures of an inequality can help us see whether the solutions are less than or greater than a boundary value. For example, to find the solution 3x is greater than 8x, we can solve the equation, 
which would end up being zero. Then instead of testing values on either side of zero, we could reason as follows about the inequality. If x is a positive value, then 3x would be less than 8x because it multiplies to be a smaller number. For 3x to be greater than 8x, x must be a negative value because then you'd have a negative smaller value, which would be a bigger number, right? So for the uh, solutions to include negative values, they must be less than zero. So therefore, our solution set would be x is less than zero. So guys, let me, let me reemphasize here. The summary is all, about, is all about reasoning skills. But remember, at the end of the day, the big thing is all that reasoning is great, but can you solve the inequality and can you understand what the inequality means in the context of the problem? That's the big thing. I want you to have reasoning skills, but I want you to be able to solve this as you would an equation and understand in the context of the problem. Oh, I went over 30 minutes. That was my goal not to. Dang it. All right. Well, in this case, um, Forbes is out. Appreciate you guys. Y'all are awesome. Have a great day. I'll see you. Bye.